grace of our Lord we we will read from the letter to Philemon the letter of Paul to Philemon New Testament Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ and Timothy our brother to Philemon our beloved friend and fellow laborer to the beloved Apphia Archippus a fellow soldier and to the church in your house grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God making mentions of you always in my prayers hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the towards all the sign that the saying of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus for we have a great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you brother Therefore, though I may be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting, yet for love's sake I rather appeal to you, being such a one as Paul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains, who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. I am sending him back. You therefore receive him, that is my own heart, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. But without your consent I want to do nothing that your good deed might not be by my, be by compulsion as it is where as it were but voluntary for perhaps he departed from a while for a while for this purpose that you might receive him forever and no longer a slave but more than a slave a beloved brother especially to me but how much more to you both in the flesh and in the lord if then you count me as a partner receive him as you would me and, but if he has wronged you or always anything put that on my account I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay, not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self besides. Yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. But meanwhile also prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. Epaphras and my fellow prisoner in Jesus Christ greet you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow laborers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. a personal letter that Apostle Paul is writing from within the chains and prison about 60 to 62 AD and he was aged by then Apostle Paul and he was speaking about Jesus Christ and his sermon and words were heard and reached even uh, Caesar but there he met a person called Onesimus and his name meant uh, useful but up until that time he was unprofitable and useless from wherever he went through to anyone that he met he had no good deeds to show for on the contrary his results in his life were tragic and he ended up being impri imprisoned with Apostle Paul he was useless 
he started as a servant, a slave, as far as we know, in the house of someone who was uh, vastly rich, a rich family called the family of Philemon, Apphia and Archippus, that were in the house were also uh, having the local church. A believer who was treating slaves as his own sons. And when someone is so faithful, and so good, and such a good Christian as Philemon. But in the midst of all the slaves that were living under Philemon, being happy and joyful because of their masters, there was one useless and unprofitable slave called Onesimus who in his freedom that he was enjoying in the house of Philemon he was able easily to steal money not, uh, not just money, anything that he was able to and depart, leave with the hope that his life is going to become better unfortunately this is the logic of the people of this earth to take have possess so that we may do better in our lives and for us to have a good uh, proper aging let's say have something in our accounts for later years now the person who was rich and he was made so by Christ he thought to himself how did he decide to move forward because of the uh, blessing of God? Someone else we read in the Bible I have no said that I have nowhere to put what God gave me or what I have. I'm gonna bring down the storages that I have and I'm gonna build new and I'm gonna place all my possessions and goods in there. And then, with absolute uh, condemnation, he said to himself that now my soul drink, eat, and be joyful, because you have many possessions for many years to come. And at that very night, God visited him and said, Foolish person, foolish person you are. And that foolish person is the person that does not think accordingly to the, his future and the word of God but he only thinks according to his own targets desires and he thinks ab through them what is best for him to do our future is only uh, confirmed by the mercy and grace of God it does not matter how much we have or how much we are profiting nor what we are able to do and how skilled we are this is destruction and a snare for you of course the person of God is working but he never stops even if everything is good as it happened with uh, to Philemon and Onesimus or the foolish rich person that we read in other verses and Onesimus was just a servant in other cases he would be a slave who would sit in a corner and only work but now we see that in Philemon's house he was free to move around how are you taking advantage of the mercy that God is giving to you and the grace that Christ is performing in our lives? That's the message. Mercy is that even though you do not deserve, get, receive. Grace is even though you do not deserve it, enjoy the hand of God in your life. Onesimus, by grace, they were enjoying the mercy of God but 
how did they think? How are these two people think? The foolish rich person and Anisimus. How are we thinking? As people, as households. How are we thinking? Do we think that we need to struggle, uh, work, so that we may receive and gain? Or are we thinking about enjoying and blessing God for everything that He has done in our lives so far? But also, as Apostle Paul says to his letter to Timothy, that to the rich of this world, re write, and this is very important, to not think of themselves as being worthy. Not say to themselves that I am good and I'm uh, worthy because I'm rich. It's easy to understand, Onesimus is easy to understand that I, w I wouldn't be able to live if I do not steal. And the foolish person, the foolish rich person said the same, that I found a way to enjoy my possessions and not to put their trust on their wealth. Your work is doing good, you have a good salary, your household is doing okay, and the things in your life are going well. Do not put your hope on your health, wealth, of your successes, of your glory, but rather hope in the living God that is giving to us richly everything to live and be joyful. That is why we are receiving them, so that we may live rightfully in these last years as we uh, enjoy the grace of God. That is why we need to do what is good. That is why we need to strengthen others. We need to be in the companion of our brothers with joy to give away and not withdrawn looking at uh, uh, all the others and not joining in, in company with them. Of course we need to work and receive payment, but the good and solid foundation is one and it, is set, was, it, was, set it, it was set by God, that is eternal life. How important is it for us to pay attention how we are thinking? What are we are doing? How are we computing, let's say, things in our lives? Because we are going to end up to live not in reality as the, the foolish rich person or Onesimus and not enjoying by grace the mercy of God. How can I express this? the message that I received today. Let us enjoy the, by the grace of the Lord the mercy of God but that mercy of God to also tr give to others so that the others can enjoy it. Let us not keep it to ourselves because we are becoming self-indulgent so that we may become vessels chosen vessels in the hands of God. Onesimus was a useless person, a useless servant. He ate and destroyed and used everything he stole and he was a, and he ended up in prison. And in this prison he found Paul another uh, fellow prisoner, two different people, two prisoners. One was a, s a slave, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and the other prisoner of his foolishness. Many times I think to myself, because I've been my li in my life many times being a prisoner but I may 
a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and that will be for my blessing. But if I am a slave and a prisoner of my mistakes, I have to become to be set free immediately. And in this prison, Onesimus get got to know the servant of the Lord, the Apostle Paul, two prisoners, and Apostle Paul, of course, as a prisoner of God, as a chosen vessels vessel in the hands of God, he did what he was supposed to do. He uh, confirmed and spoke about the name of Christ, and Onesimus cannot but confirm and understand and remember that these words he heard before when he was a slave and a, a servant rather of Philemon's. His wife Apphia and his son Archippus. But also the local church that was working and uh, taking place in the house of Philemon. Imagine he was listening about Christ in a joyful and uh, easy uh, way of life when he was under Philemon. But now he's also listening to the same words, but he's now a prisoner. How w wonderful would it be and is it when w we accept the word of the Lord, when we are in uh, a good way, when we are receiving the grace of God and the mercy of God in our lives and how afflicted and bad it is for us to listen to the word of the Lord and accept it but when we are in affliction and in prison alone and a prisoner he was hunted do you understand what it means to be a servant that ran away stole money and ran away he was not able to leave anywhere and especially the servants were also uh, marked so any, everyone knew he, that he was a servant. And the only one that accepted him was Christ with his own servant. The only one who strengthened him and spoke and gave him hope was Christ with uh, great results because only Christ can as a blessing God bless you and such a, a useless person he was able to transform him he was obviously uh, baptized in water and in spirit and now two brothers in Christ both prisoners one from his own mistakes the other of Jesus Christ they have to take decisions now what are we doing now? Of course, Apostle Paul, Onesimus rather, that his name actually means useful. How he was dwelling, what he has done, how he was dwelling and what he has done. Uh, and he confessed everything to Apostle Paul, we believe. And Apostle Paul, with uh, amazement, he heard that he was a servant of his friend, his fellow brother, that he knows him well, that is Philemon. Because he says later on that if you truly uh, have me as a companion, that is the love of Christ. In, in verse actually 17 it says that if then you count me as a partner, as he thinks of Philemon, as he spoke to him uh, many years before Apostle Paul and about Christ and Philemon himself accepted now he found one of his servants who was a prisoner afflicted and he is taking the decision to send him back Onesimus is now ready to do anything that Apostle Paul will tell him to do he is ready to do as God is going to instruct him for the first time he is found to th that splendid position. No matter what God is telling him to do, he's going to do it. And this is what God wants in our lives. For the heart of Onesimus is straight with the Lord and is about ready to do as he as God is instructing. 
and the heart that was previously wicked and foolish now has been transformed and is ready to do accordingly to the word of the Lord to the very detail and that is amazing unique I may even add and we hope that we are found that way because God wants us to be that way he is trying to make us that way but he cannot intervene if we do not decide for ourselves because we have been given a freedom of thought and actions but without Christ we are not able to do anything we can only ask from Christ to ask to give us such a heart that will be according to his own heart so that we may always be ready to do accordingly to the word of the Lord that will be revealed to us by God himself with various ways and now the heart of Onesimus has reached that point as he saw one person to speak to him about the things that he has already heard to convince him to speak and give him love and mercy and grace to speak to him about these things of God and also baptize him in the water a complete transformation within the prison to the one who was useless to the Midianite to the enemy of Philemon's of the people of God a perfect transformation and now they need to take the right decisions Apostle Paul is thinking how much would I want you to stay with me and help me with the many needs I have because I am now aged and I'm not able to do things as I used to be as I was able to use before to do before I'm not now able but if you stand by me then it would be good for me and you but he thinks something that is very interesting what is good for me and you there's always something better for you and me and what is that the best the perfect and after they spoke prayed and they decided that the perfect thing is for you to go back to the one that bought you to the one that you belong to because you are a slave a servant you have to go back to Philemon to your master why firstly because you are a slave to him and second to give back and re rectify for the mistakes you've made so that God may be pleased on he on your work to your coming back when the prodigal son the wayward son rather the first thing he said is that I need to come back to Christ he did not say to go back to another relative of mine but he said I have to go back to my father's his house where I belong in the same manner God guided Paul and Onesimus to go back to the place of his father to go back to where he belonged and it's very important for us dear brethren to know where we belong where do you belong do we understand how important this is where do you belong and I want to say this even more spiritually add an example where you should go so that you may serve others Hobab he was a Midianite but he was not from there he was not from this place because he is now in the place the where God wants him to be this is where he belongs you belong where God wants you to be but not where the place where your heart leads you to or your mind but where God is leading you 
this is where you need to be and you have work to do there you have a mission for your blessing eternal but if you belong to your uh, business then you are serving your business remember the word where do you belong if you belong to your household then you're gonna serve your household but if you belong to Christ you are serving Christ where do you belong and maybe say that again and more sim and put that uh, in, a sim in the simplest way possible who are you serving if you belong and serve to human desires and situations then your heart that is foolish and wicked will surely guide you away and as you've been guided away you're gonna do things that are gonna bring you in a bad situation always it's not easy my brethren to take on the decision as we test ourselves and say and understand where we belong what am I supposed to do who whom am I supposed to serve because I need to say that I need to serve my wife and my wife it's logical to say that I need to serve my husband but it's a mistake a grave mistake because I am a slave of Christ I belong to Christ so I'm gonna go where Christ is sending me this is my decision our decision if as Hobab, Christ sending me to the people of Israel to serve, this is where I need to go, because I belong to Christ. If he is sending me to Arabia, this is where I need to go, as Apostle Paul did, because Christ is sending me there. This has to be clear in our minds. To whom do I belong? Who is my master? Who is sending me? And what am I supposed to do? Of course, the wife needs to be obedient to the husband, but who is she belonging to? The answer is to Christ. And Christ says to her that you need to be obedient to your husband as to me. The wife to be obedient to he, her husband as in the Lord. the greatest difficulty I never understood it is for you to know to whom I belong because I may think to myself that I belong to my children of course I'm gonna serve them I belong to my business of course you're gonna work but you're not belonging to your work of course you're going to serve the church, but you are not belonging to the church. Your master is Christ. There's only one. He who you set your hope on to, and you want your heart to be according to his heart. Why? So that you may always be doing according to his own will. That's how you belong to Christ. Amazing, my dear brethren, for us to understand and my mind to be clear, my heart and my thoughts to be clear, knowing that I belong to Christ and I am doing what Christ wants me to do because He has prepared a heart that is according to His heart so that I may do according to His works and plans. With that mindset, therefore, Apostle Paul says that you do not belong to me. Onesimus would say probably that I would rather stay with you, Paul. Because what Apostle Paul is selling, saying to him is uh, painful. You're going to go to Philemon, you're going to get down to the ground. What am I supposed to say to him? Aphia, Archippus, they know what I've done. I have to humble myself and humiliate myself. But 
you belong to Christ and you're going to do what Christ wants you to do and what he's commanding you to do. Both you, Apostle Paul, and you, Onesimus, and you, Philemon. Now, therefore, God needs to find a servant to prepare the hearts of all people. The heart of Onesimus, you need to surely go back to Philemon. The heart of Philemon, you need to accept and love Onesimus and understand that he was taken away from you for a little while because everything is done for the good to the people that love God so that you may enjoy him now not just a servant but as a brother what Onesimus has done to you Philemon was for God to bless you eventually and for a, uh, a bit after for Onesimus to come back to you he's not going to return to you the things he stole but he's going to come as a beloved brother to you to serve you and to serve Christ with you to whom you belong and now God has to prepare the hearts of all people Paul's to send him away Onesimus Onesimus is hard to uh, accept that he need to go he needs to go and Philemon's to accept him and Apphias as well and Archippus's and the church is hard as well and how is God going to be able to accept and do, do all these things rather there's only one way his word through the spirit that is how he's going to be able to do it and this is how Paul is driven to write that letter who is a word by Christ himself so that everything may be settled for the hearts of Colossians where Ph Philemon was, the Colossians heart in the church that Philemon was uh, having in his house but also our hearts as well that we are reading them these verses today knowing that we belong to Christ I mean my brethren we only belong to Christ are you not a deacon are you not an elder I belong to Christ and Christ is telling me to serve my brothers are you not uh, someone who is slaving in the church are you not belonging to the deacon are you not belonging to the elder or the pastor you know, the answer is no I belong to Christ and I'm only listening to Christ and Christ is going to fix my heart and the oldest is heart and the pastor's heart and everyone's heart so that we may do according to his own will because we and I have taken the decision that I belong to Christ and it's an amazing sermon an amazing message today that I belong to Christ and it is finished I only belong to Christ the Son of God and he is my master and Lord he is the one that set me free he is the one that brought me to this place thus far and he's going to be the one who's going to take me only if I belong to him and he also wrote that amazing letter not as Apostle Paul now because of God and through God but rather he wrote that letter as a prisoner of Jesus Christ to his friend who was named Philemon because he's gonna ask him for something that is painful he understands Apostle Paul God understands who knows the hearts of all people that the heart of Philemon is in with bitterness about Onesimus he gave him everything and he stole from me and he departed after that imagine the moment because there were no phones back then there were nothing there were no emails back then so that Apostle Paul may reach uh, Philemon beforehand when at one instant Onesimus knocked on the door of Philemon when Philemon saw him what would he he th think what was he thinking was he angry was he about to send him away what would he do but blessed be the name of the Lord because Onesimus is giving him one letter 
and he saw in him the letter of Paul that is the word of God and he saw in him the word of God he saw in him the word of God that is speaking to Philemon spe specifically Aphia and Archippus and he starts reading Philemon do you know brother Philemon who is that I love you very much because you are useful because you believe in the truth you love your brothers and you we never stop and I never stop praying for you for your prayer for your faith to be alive for the glory of God with the revelation of all works in the name of Christ in your household and in your work and Philemon is now reading and he, Onesimus is standing waiting and he's saying accept him as you would with me help him of course yes he mistreated you and anything that he stole from you put it on my account how good is God do you understand what he says when I understood it I was weeping whatever he has taken from you put it my uh, put in my account who Paul no God accept him I'm going to give back to you what he has taken from you me Jesus Christ to whom you belong I'm gonna give you back anything that he has taken from you everything do not be angry but rather love him accept him because this has happened and he abandoned you so that he may come back not as a slave anymore but as a dear brother that you with your own a sermon you were not able to transform and make blessed be the name of the Lord and of course he's speaking about him in the church of uh, Co the Colossians because it is amazing indeed that this person Onesimus is a faithful servant beloved brother and someone who's gonna reveal to you all the things of me the things that I've taught him when a useful truly useful person of God comes a servant what is he revealing to you all the things that you have uh, that the person that sent him away has in his heart and now the opposite happens wherever God is gonna send you what are you gonna reveal all the things that that he who sent you has in his heart to whom you belong what are you gonna reveal his love his mercy his grace why have you been sent in the first place for his glory for his work he who accepts you he accepts me and he who accepts me accepts my father that sent me therefore we are one image into two he is sending us so that we may reveal the mindset of the one who sent us his heart why have we been sent to the place we are now in and we when we accept someone we accept and we ask him and we try to understand who has sent him so that we may understand what he has in his heart someone is visiting you who has sent you a person 
God if God has sent you then God wants to reveal to you something if a person sent him he is trying to reveal something from his own heart but if the devil sent him he sent him so that he may drive you away and lead you to his works therefore my dear brethren it's very important in our lives in our everyday life to know firstly to whom you, we belong secondly who is sending us thirdly what we need to do to do the work of the one who has sent us also who are we accepting someone is coming and he is saying something to us think who is sending that person listen so that you may understand from the things that he is saying to you who is sending him is it God could it be God and he is saying something to you that you have never thought about is God sending Onesimus Philemon to Philemon so that Onesimus may reveal to him something that never crossed his mind that he a unprofitable useless prisoner found himself with in the company of someone that actually spoke to you one day and now he's sent he's been sent back to you to help you and serve with you how important is it an apostle Paul is confirming and finalizing his mission saying to him having confidence in your obedience all right to you knowing that you will do even more than I say not just what I say just what I'm saying that you need to do but you will do more than what I say why because if you do what I say that you need to do you belong to me but because you do not belong to me and you belong to Christ you're gonna do even more but what I am saying isn't it beautiful and that is why because I love you and I know that you love me dearly because you belong to the same master that I belong to Jesus Christ because we are fellow servants because we are brothers because we are friends in Christ prepare a guest room for me for I trust that through your prayers I also be granted to you for a little while so that we may talk for a little while so that I may say to you what I have in my heart and give to you the chance to tell for you to tell me what you have in your heart and this is what Paul is saying to Philemon but also today Christ is saying these words to each and every one of us individually that are listening to the word of the Lord as Christ has opened up our hearts to listen to his word he has opened up our minds to understand the word of the Lord and this word that is prepare a guest room for me is saying Christ that each and every one of us belong to prepare a guest room for me because I will be I th I trust that I will be granted to you and I will tell what I ha I tell you what I have in my heart I'm gonna listen to what you have in your heart so that with a heart accordingly to the heart of the Lord you are going to do what my father wants me to, wants us to do but also I will do what my father wants me to do with you because both of us have a heart accordingly to the heart of, the, of God so that we may want to do all the things of God and I repeat myself saying prepare a guest room for me so that I may come live with you speak to you and I repeat myself again 
Christ is saying this to us today. Prepare a guest room. For I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. Prepare a guest room so I, and pray so that I may come. Pray so that I may come and prepare the situation, the place, your heart, so that I may come and speak with you as a friend to, a, to his friend, as a brother to his own brother, as a servant to his own master, as a fellow servant to his fellow servant. And I repeat. Christ is saying this. Christ is repeating. Prepare a guest room for me. Because I intend with your prayer to be granted to you. I'm not going to come by myself. It will be the result of your prayer. Of your prayers. And I'm reading it again. Prepare a guest room for me, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be granted to you. And Apostle Paul is saying this to Philemon, but today Christ to you. Pray, God, say, God, come. Christ, come, my Lord. I have prepared everything. My heart is prepared. My praying corner has been prepared. Everything is prepared. Come. So that we may kneel down, pray together. So that you may talk to me and understand what you want. And for me to speak to you and you understand what I want, I mean.